Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, where my mission in life is to fix every oil burning engine that Volkswagen and Audi have ever put on the face of the earth. Before I start this video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you who have taken the time to post your feedback and your comments in the previous four videos on the B12 piston soaking process from across the world. This has been a great success. It's a fantastic learning opportunity for all of us. Thank you so much. Please keep those questions and comments coming. As always, I try to respond to your comments as fast as I can. I receive a lot of great ideas and a lot of feedback. I really, really appreciate it. And with that, let's jump into today's episode. This is a 2016 Audi Q7 with a three liter supercharged motor, which currently has about 122,000 kilometers on it with a relatively decent consumption. The owner currently is burning about a liter every 1500 to 2000 kilometers, depending on driving style. Currently, the car has burned about a half liter for the last 1800 kilometers. So the consumption is not horrible by any stretch of imagination. It's a lot better than the previous Q7 that we did. And technically speaking, it is within Volkswagen Audi spec, which is, I believe, one liter per thousand kilometers. This is kind of what they measure. I still think that's a ridiculous benchmark, but regardless, this car is not in a bad condition by any means. However, the owner does not want to keep adding a liter of oil every 2,000 kilometers or you know, losing three liters of oil per oil change. So he wants to try and do a piston soak to see if he can improve his oil consumption to a more reasonable level where perhaps like the previous viewer, he can get to a no change without adding any oil. One thing you may have noticed is that I'm not at my house, this is not my garage, and I do not have access to my lift. And that's done on purpose. A lot of people were worried that this is a very complicated process and they're trying to find shops to do it for them. Of course, shops out there, and we already talked about this in the previous videos, are not really all that keen in doing this process for whatever reasons, whether it's a liability, cost, time, pure desire not to do it, uh, you know, wanting to charge $20,000 of people to fix their engine. Regardless of what the reason is, most shops out there do not want to do this for customers. And therefore, there's a lot of people who add comments and questions as to, does anybody know a shop that can do this? The point of today's video is to try and figure out, do you really need a shop to do this? All right, with that said, let's take a quick look at the car and get right into it. Now, the black smoke is somewhat expected. This is a tuned car. The blue smoke is a pretty strong evidence that we have oil burning. First things first, we got to pull out the spark plugs so that we can take a look inside the engine. Yeah, unfortunately, the coolant tank is sitting right on top of the number four plug. So it's actually pretty hard to work with it in the place. So you're just gonna have to move it out of the way somehow without breaking it, of course. All six plugs look about the same. They are black, the car is tuned. It's definitely running richer than a stock vehicle. They have been replaced somewhat recently. So these are not original plugs, obviously 120,000 kilometers. I see nothing that concerns me. None of them are wet. Okay, these look fine. We can put them right back in and they're gonna keep on working. All right, we checked all six cylinders, everything was fine. I don't see any scoring on the cylinder walls. If you watched the previous video, we do these in pairs. Uh, and the reason for that is the angle of the pistons. Two pairs at top dead center at uh, the same time. In this case, it's one and six. And the reason we do it at top dead center is because when I pour the B12, it's actually gonna fill the entire void between the piston and the head and the liquid is gonna come outside. Otherwise, when the piston is further down, you're gonna need a lot more liquid to level off. We do want to soak the whole ring at the same time. So if you can imagine the piston at 45 degrees, we're gonna want liquid to the top so that the top of the piston is also soaking. Now, put the pistons at the top of that center in pairs and soak them in that way. So we're doing piston one and six right now. I've already gone ahead and marked 50 milliliters on this little cup and we need a funnel to pour that in. It's 
So we're taking a look inside the cylinder bore again. As you can tell, the liquid is above the spark plug threads, which are right there. So we've got the entire cavity full, and you can see the liquid is already getting very black from everything that's on top of the piston. Now we're gonna do the same thing for cylinder number six. Both cylinders one and six have B12 inside of them. So we're gonna put some paper on top just to stop any evaporation and to prevent anything from going inside the cylinder. And then we cook. All right, we're about three and a half hours in. Let's take a look at cylinders one and six. They're the ones with the liquid. We can see the liquid is past the plug hole and is now settled at the bottom end of the piston. But you can see a lot of crap falling off. It looks like it's built off from the valve. And you can see how it's cracked up on the valve here. And there's a big chunk of carbon that's hanging out right between the valve and the liquid where it's gone in. So then number six has no liquid left. Slightly different than compared to number one. I was talking to the owner about this. I can't seem to find any correlation between how fast a cylinder drains versus, you know, compression or anything like that. It does not seem to be a hard rule on this, but <laughs> you can, oh my goodness, look at this. You can just see, wow. Now we're gonna do my sort of least favorite part of this exercise, which is turn the crank by hand. In this situation, the car is on the ground, but it is high enough. Like if you're doing this on an S4 or an A6, you'd probably have a bit of a problem doing that from the bottom. But this car is high enough and I can reach in from the bottom and turn the crank. Now let's talk about how you actually do this. A lot, a lot, a lot of people keep asking about how do you turn the crank on the V6? Folks are in and out to use a tool that looks like this, all right? That's for the V6s, the V8s, a lot of their motors. The V6s and V8s unfortunately use um, small bolts in a circle. So you cannot really grab any one of them to turn the crank. So they use a tool like this, which goes in between all of the bolts and basically uses the four points here to push against the head of the bolt to turn the crank. You need to get one of these if you plan on doing a job on one of those V6s, three liter supercharged. It's really not that complicated. This is just a size 19 on the back. So you reach in on the bottom, fit this in the middle of the crank, and then you turn it. Right, so we've done three hours soak on two cylinders so far. I just turned the crank quite a few times just to make sure that the B12 is, you know, flowing in. A lot of people have asked, do I really need to do that? Honestly, it is the most probably annoying part of this whole process because you have to reach in. It's a little bit hard to get to probably in the special tool. You need a ratchet. I think, from my experience, everything we've done so far, most people report the same thing. This does help. So what you're doing as you're moving the piston up and down is the liquid that's now sitting around the rings is going to move around. As these rings are trying to get back to their original position, this is going to help. So it's softened up. It's allowing these rings to get back and see that you don't want to just soak it, let it dry off and just stay where it is. You kind of want them to move around as you're doing this. So I'm going to add another 50 milliliters in those two cylinders. I'm going to wait another three hours. I'm going to rotate the crank again and I'm gonna bring the next set up to top that center. At that point, it makes no difference whether the liquid has gone down or not, because it's just gonna keep draining as the second set is soaking. So let's fast forward to tomorrow and see how this goes. Okay, the soaking process is done. So the big job now is to clean up all of the garbage from inside the cylinders to make sure that the crank is spinning nice and free before we hit the starter. Because if we do hit the starter and we have all this carbon build up on the pistons, we can cause some damage. All right, so compressed air, let's take our time. We're gonna blow everything that's left out of here. Um, try and capture as much as possible. We don't want some of the leftover B12 going all over the place here. Then we're gonna try and crank the engine without the plugs. Jeez. It's 
cylinders are empty. A lot of garbage came out. As you can see, this rag was nice and clean. There's a ton that comes out. In fact, these are all the little carbon pieces that are coming out. They're flying all over the place here. I verified that the crank is now turning freely. So the next thing I'm gonna do is hit the starter without the spark plugs, no compression. Let the engine turn a couple of times by itself before we put the plugs in. The last thing to do before we start the engine, put the plugs back in, hook up a couple of the sensors and fire it up. We're at operating temperature, so let's change the oil. Otherwise, the engine's running fine, no real issues. That's it for this one, folks. As you may notice, it's been a few months since I actually did the treatment on the Q7. I was waiting to find out how effective the treatment actually was. The numbers are in. The car has done 3,800 kilometers since we did the soak before the oil warning light came on. So we have effectively doubled the mileage it goes to a liter of oil. Now, these are not the best results. I think the owner and I were both hoping to get to at least an oil change before the light comes on. He'll probably do the treatment again in the future and likely push the engine to the five, 6,000 kilometers per liter of oil sort of mark that he's going for. I think with this video, I've answered most, if not all of your questions on this platform. A couple of points that should still be made up. No, you cannot lift your car on one side to make up for the 45 degree angle of the pistons. Completely impractical. You cannot work on it. Clean up your cylinders as you finish them off. So each pair of cylinders, as the soaking process is done, blow all the garbage out. As you see, a significant amounts of carbon gets dissolved by the B12. You don't want that stuff sitting in there as you're soaking the rest of the pistons. So make sure you clean those pistons up. Pretty obvious on the V6, that carbon accumulates on one side of the piston and will then give you trouble rotating the crank. So the faster you clean it out and the more you turn the crank, the better it is. Keep turning that crank throughout the procedure. Get Volkswagen 204058. Don't skip that step. You do not want the piston rings to just simply sit in one spot and then get soaked and dry up as the process is going on. Get the two. It's 15 bucks from Amazon. It's worth it. So far, both Q7 owners have been reluctant to drive their car with B12 inside of it. When I did the Q5, I drove it for well over 30 minutes on the highway and it was very effective for that vehicle. Both the Q7s have shown results that are slightly less than ideal. So I'm starting to think that that final cycle of B12 through the motor to really clean everything up might actually be a good thing. I'll leave that up to you guys. The risk is obviously yours. These are your engines. If I was doing it to a vehicle of mine, I would definitely take it for a drive for at least 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, okay, don't do anything crazy. But, you know, take that car on the road. Let B12 do a, a proper flush of the motor because these are very, very dirty engines. And with that, we're going to wrap this video up. Thank you so much for joining me as always. If you have any questions or feedback, comments below. If you like what you see, click subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.